Imposter syndrome is defined as, quote, the persistent inability to believe that one's success is deserved or has been legitimately achieved as a result of one's own efforts or skills, unquote. It's a pattern of self-doubt and a fear that other people will find you out as a fraud and realize that you actually aren't qualified. In this episode, I'll be sharing why you struggle with imposter syndrome and how to deal with it so that it doesn't hold you back in fear and self-doubt. This is episode number 83. Welcome to Calmly Coping. My name is Tati, and I'm a licensed therapist and a coach specializing in high-functioning anxiety. I help high achievers overcome high-functioning anxiety so they can finally stop overthinking everything. If this topic interests you, then please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Imposter syndrome is not a mental health disorder or a diagnosis by any means. It is just a phrase to describe fears and feelings of undeserving. It's not tied to anxiety, depression, or self-esteem, or any specific professions or level of achievement. Therefore, it can affect anybody and everybody. The feelings of fraudulence that make up imposter syndrome are extremely common. Noted public figures such as Maya Angelou and Albert Einstein both struggled with imposter syndrome. In the research that I did on imposter syndrome, I learned that people who are highly skilled or accomplished tend to think that others are just as skilled as them. And this might result in that feeling of undeserving, of feeling like you're not worthy of having this title or position or degree or being in this program or having this job, whatever it is that you're feeling an imposter about. It's that feeling that you aren't good enough or aren't qualified enough for whatever it is that you're doing, and somebody is going to find you out and recognize that this is the case. As a result, you might pressure yourself to work harder in order to keep others from recognizing your shortcomings or failures that you've had, in order to feel like you're worthy enough for the roles that you're in and to feel like you're deserving of having that role. And in order to make up for what you consider might be your lack of intelligence or lack of qualifications or anything else, depending on what the situation is. And you might overwork in order to ease these feelings of guilt that you have that come up from feeling like you're not deserving in this role. Another way this might show up is by feeling as though you need to have a certain degree or a certain number of years of experience or a certain certification or qualification to demonstrate that you are qualified or worthy of having the role or title that you do. So for example, this might show up in my field of being a therapist as, you know, I need to get another certification in order to say that I'm worthy of treating people that are struggling with X issue. I've definitely struggled with imposter syndrome myself in the past, feeling as though clients or colleagues or other people might find out that I'm not qualified especially in the beginning when I was first training to be a therapist, I thought this all the time. And I would often get called out by family members saying that, oh, you look too young to be doing this because I was doing a lot of family therapy. And that kind of reinforced that imposter syndrome that I felt like I'm not qualified enough to be doing this, even though I had years of education behind me and as well as Um, not a lot, but, you know, I had some experience and training in what I was doing. I still felt like an imposter. Maybe you can relate to this, or maybe you are struggling with this right now. Another concept that might be helpful in understanding imposter syndrome is the Dunning-Kruger effect. So this is a cognitive bias that results in people when you become more qualified or more aware of something that you tend to underestimate your ability. And people who have low ability at a task tend to overestimate their own ability. So let's say if you're a beginner at something and you've just started it, you might tend to overestimate your ability. Whereas the more that you get to know about something, the more you realize you don't know. So when you become more knowledgeable, you often become aware of all of these different facets of a topic that maybe you didn't even know that you didn't know before, if that makes sense. So there can be that area where, you know, the more that you know about something and the more trained you become in something, 
the more you realize you don't know, and so then the less confident you feel. So that doesn't mean that you don't have knowledge in this area, you're just aware as to how vast of a topic this is. So hopefully that's making sense, and maybe that applies to you. Maybe you're at a point in your education or your career or your life where you're feeling as though there's a lot that you don't know, and so you are fearing that you're not qualified. So the reason why imposter syndrome is called what it is, is because it's often not fact. You know, you probably wouldn't be in the program that you're in if you're in school, or you probably wouldn't have the job that you did if you weren't somewhat qualified. And so that's when it can help to learn how to deal with imposter syndrome so that these feelings of fear and doubt don't hold you back and don't result in you spinning your wheels trying to prove yourself or trying to overwork in order to demonstrate that you're worthy and so that you can then learn to cope with these feelings and move forward and push past these fears and doubts that might be coming up. So before we get into how to deal with imposter syndrome, I want to talk about my free high-functioning anxiety quiz that you can get by going to hfaquiz.com. So if you take this quiz, then it will let you know what your level is of struggling with high-functioning anxiety, and I will also provide you with free resources that are personalized to your needs. So again, you can get this by going to hfaquiz.com. So here are my tips to deal with imposter syndrome. Tip number one is to reflect upon the achievements and accomplishments that have gotten you to where you are right now. Reflect upon positive feedback that you've received and ask friends, loved ones, and colleagues what your strengths are, or to share with you, maybe providing reassurance, having a reminder objectively of what these accomplishments are and why you've actually gotten to where you are can help to ease those feelings of imposter syndrome that come up. Tip number two is to journal about your thoughts or feelings of self-doubt or talk to somebody that you trust, like a mentor, a supervisor, professor, anybody that's in your field or anybody who might be able to potentially relate to those feelings that you're struggling with and then challenge them. So if you're journaling on your own and getting these doubts and fears out, like what if people find out that I'm not good enough or I don't know what I'm doing, challenge these fears. Look at them objectively and look at the evidence. What is the likelihood that people are going to find you out and find that you're completely unqualified? Probably unlikely. I'm sure that there are certain things that you don't know. However, oftentimes these fears are grounded in black and white thinking. And so viewing things as you either know everything or you know nothing, which is not reflective of reality. Of course, there is that gray area in between where I'm sure you're probably falling and you're probably not taking into account all of the things that do make you qualified. So journaling and getting out these thoughts and feelings on paper or whether it is to somebody that you trust can really help to actually challenge and see whether or not these fears are actually valid or whether they're coming from a place of insecurity and self-doubt, which is very much the case when it comes to imposter syndrome. Tip number three is to stop comparing yourself to others. And I know it is easier said than done. However, this is something that can come up a lot when you're dealing with imposter syndrome, that tendency to want to compare yourself to others and to look at what you see others doing externally and then compare all of the stuff that's going on internally along with what you're doing externally to them. So already you're biased. You're biased when it comes to looking at the way that other people are doing things because you don't know what's going on in the inside. You don't know if they're also struggling with imposter syndrome. You don't know what their doubts and fears are, unless of course they're sharing them to you. And even then it's what they're choosing to share with you. And so that's when it's important to try and get away from that place of comparing yourself because it's never going to be an objective way of looking at things because you're always going to have a more intimate knowledge of what you're struggling with and less so of other people. So it's always going to be this kind of rose-colored glasses way of looking at other people. So I have a whole episode on how to stop comparing yourself to others. You can click on the link in the corner if you're watching on YouTube. Tip number four for how to deal with imposter syndrome is to remember that it might come up at new stages of your life, your career, your education, and anytime you're doing something that's outside of your comfort zone. So recognizing that can help you to have that awareness that Yeah, it's something that might come up and you can't always control or prevent those feelings. 
And that's just that reminder that these feelings are coming up because of that fear, because you're doing something that's new or you're doing something that's uncertain and identify ways that you can cope with those those feelings that come up. So maybe that's one of the three things that I just shared. And another way is to speak to yourself like you would to a friend. Be self-compassionate and recognize that it's okay to feel fear and it's okay to experience imposter syndrome. It doesn't mean that you aren't qualified. It's just those fears that are coming up because you're trying to stay out of danger and your brain is trying to protect you and keep you safe from being judged by others or being critiqued or criticized or being rejected. So question those thoughts when they come up and try and bring them down to reality. Your action tip is to take the tips that resonated with you and put them into action. I know that dealing with imposter syndrome can be uncomfortable, but I also know that you can cope with it. If you're watching this on YouTube, then leave me a comment below letting me know your thoughts about imposter syndrome. And if you wanna join the conversation about high-functioning anxiety, then join my free Facebook community, Calmly Coping at calmlycoping.com slash group. While you wait for next week's episode, I have other episodes about decreasing anxiety, adopting a healthy mindset, and managing your time and energy. So make sure you check out these episodes here. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and until next time, be calm.